What is going on guys? Welcome to the second C++ tutorial series on Neural9. In today's video, we're going to set up our environment. We're going to install a compiler and an editor uh, for the programming in C++. So let us get right into it. All right, so let's start by getting a compiler for our system. And for this tutorial series, we're going to use the G++ compiler. Of course, if you have a favorite compiler that you want to use, feel free to do that. You don't have to use this one as long as you know how to get it running. It doesn't matter which compiler you use. Um, here we're going to install the G++ compiler and for Windows we need additional software to do that. I think on Linux and on Mac it's either pre-installed or you can easily install it by using the uh, default package manager. So you just type sudo apt get install G++ on Ubuntu for example or yum install or I don't know how it's done on Mac but uh, just use the package manager. You can then install the G++ compiler or it's even pre-installed by default. So on Windows, however, we need to get the minimalist GNU for Windows in order to run the GNU compiler. And for this, we navigate to mingw.org and click on the Downloads tab uh, on the top right here on this page. Then we see the mingw get setup exe file. We click on Download and then it's going to be downloaded for us. I'm not going to run this here because I've already installed this mingw platform. But you can save the file, you run it, you install it, the installation process is pretty self-explanatory. And once you have that, what you do is you open up your start menu and you type min gw, then you're going to see the min gw installation manager. And here we have a bunch of packages that we can choose from, that we can install here. And the one that we're interested in is the GNU C++ compiler, the binary file. So this one, the min gw32 gcc g++ bin, the binary. Um, you can see in the description, it says GNU C++ compiler. You click on it. In my case, it's already installed, but you click on it. Uh, you mark it for installation. So I'm going to click on something else here. You just say mark for installation, but on this one here, uh, then you click on installation and on apply changes, and then you're going to install the compiler. Once you have done that, however, you can probably not use it directly, but you need to add it to the path variable. So you go to uh, your start menu again, and you type environment variables or just environment. Uh, then you get to this uh, beautiful window here and you click on environment variables down here. And then what we care about are the system variables. And here we scroll down to the path, to the path variable here, and we click on edit. So we see a bunch of entries here. And what you want to do is you want to add a new entry called min GW bin. So you want to go to new and you want to type C backslash, sorry, C backslash min gw backslash bin. So this is the path that you want to add. I'm not going to do this right now because I already have it as you can see here. And once you have done that correctly, uh, make sure that this is the actual installation path where you installed min gw, uh, but it usually is. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and run a command line. Um, and when you have done that, you can check if this worked by just typing g++. If it says, I don't know what that command is, for example, if I type neural nine here, it's going to say it's not recognized as an internal or external command. Uh, if that is the case, something ran, went wrong. But if you see something like G++ fatal error, no input files, you know that the compiler is installed. So this is what you want to have. So what you're also going to need is some sort of development environment, an IDE or an editor where you can put your code into, because I would not recommend just using the basic Windows Notepad. And for this, you can go with Visual Studio Code. It's the one that I'm going to use for this tutorial series. It's well designed, well structured, it has plugins. Uh, it's open source, free, platform independent. What do you want more? It's from Microsoft, but it still runs on Windows, on Linux, and on Mac. Um, it's the one I'm going to use. I essentially use it for everything except for uh, Python and for, for Java because there I use PyCharm and IntelliJ. So we're going to use this one for this tutorial series. I recommend it. Alternatively, you can also go with Sublime Text. Uh, however, Sublime Text costs money, but it's a very popular IDE amongst programmers. So if you want to spend some money, you can also go with Sublime Text, or you can go with Atom, which is also an in, in, uh, open source and free editor that is hackable, customizable, uh, if you want to look into that. If you want to have a big IDE, however, not just a uh, an editor, you can go with Visual Studio itself, with the full Visual Studio software, but then you're probably uh, more likely to be focused on Windows because Visual Studio only works on Windows. It's focused on Windows. I would not recommend it unless you're working on some big Windows focused projects. I'm not going to use it here. Uh, it's, it's essentially when you're doing real desktop development with 
C++ for Windows. So if you're going to do that, go with Windows, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, not code, sorry, with the Visual Studio software. Um, alternatively, you can also have code blocks, which is a full born IDE for C, C++ and Fortran. Uh, I personally am not very, uh, I'm not a big fan of the design. However, if you don't mind it, you can use it on Linux and on Windows. I think it's probably also available for Mac. Uh, but that's also a good IDE that you can use. And if you want to spend some money and probably want to have the best IDE, I've never used it, but I know the JetBrains products are always awesome. Um, so C line is essentially the equivalent to PyCharm and IntelliJ for C and C++. Uh, as I said, I've never used it because it costs money and IntelliJ and PyCharm have a community edition that's free. C line does not. Uh, but since PyCharm and IntelliJ are great IDEs, I think that C line is probably also going to be a great IDE. So if you want to spend some money and you want to do C, C++ coding professionally, you can probably also look into C line. But as I said, we're going to use Visual Studio Code for this tutorial. So that's it for today's video. You should now have a compiler on your system and also an editor, one piece of software that allows you to write code and another piece of software that allows you to uh, take that code and compile it into an executable file. If you have that, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter which editor, which IDE, which compiler, as long as you can write and compile C++ code, you're fine. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to do that. We're going to learn how to write code. We're going to learn how to compile C++ uh, files into executable files and we're going to start to get into the programming. So if you enjoyed this video, if you like it, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel and we'll see more future videos for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.